Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Incoming Transmission by Magic Meeple Games. The game plays up to, I mean, really you can play up to as many players as you want, but is a one cooperative many game in which you're going to be out in space in a spacecraft and you are trapped, right? And uh, something has gone wrong. The systems have caused failure, maybe an asteroid hit the ship, and now you're trying to con contact base or ground control to figure out what is going on. Major Tom, what is, what, what are we doing here, right? And so, Basically, the, the, the game is going to involve you trying to contact them and they're giving you certain orders or directives and as the game goes on, you're going to be trying to put those directives in order. Sometimes they'll be scrambled, sometimes they'll be related to you as best as they can, and you're going to have a certain amount of rounds throughout the game if you can accomplish your objectives by getting certain things together. Like maybe you need the android to reach the science lab for some reason, or you need the water purifier to hit the uh, rescue pods. And if you can do those three different objectives at the end of the game, you're going to win. If not, you'll be trapped in space forever and lost to the galaxy in which would be a very sad ending. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at incoming transmission down below and what you get. Here we have incoming transmission and everything that the game comes with. I went ahead and set up the board as well. You're going to be getting these tiles. They're going to be blank ones that have nothing on each side. And then you're going to be getting these repair tiles and locations that are like the science lab and it has a repair side uh, and a non-repaired side, as well as all the rest of them here. You'll also get one of these things here that tells you north, south, east, and west. You can just put it next to the board that gives people uh, direction as to where they need to go and how they're going to be setting up the transmissions. The beginning of the game is going to come with these transmission cards that you'll be using to determine how difficult the game is and how many rounds you'll be playing. You'll be starting with one of these extras and then there are these mission objectives that the ground control is going to have to try and lure people to go to the correct areas. H to T, H to G. There's tons of them. They're basically enough to relay all the different uh, aspects of the game as to how it's going to be moving. The one rule, of course, is that as they pick things up, you can't go across the board. It's too far so that's not allowed. You have to just draw a new one. you got signal boost cards as you complete your different objectives. You're going to gain these to use, and they're beneficial throughout the game. And of course, commands, where ground control is going to be giving out these commands in an order, and hopefully you'll be putting them back in the correct order. Uh, you also get this little meeple here, which indicates your crew, and moving around the spacecraft, trying to do its best, it's the best as it can to make sure that you guys make it back home safely. All right, let me tell you about the game. Incoming transmission is going to be played throughout a series of rounds. Each round, the players that are on ground control as many as you would like, basically, are going to set up a number of different transmissions or uh, commands. And these commands are going to be different things. There's deploy, collect, and repair. Repairing is going to be allowing you to flip tiles from red to green. Collecting is allowing you to pick up a tile on the board that is uh, pick upable or obtainable. They have little symbols on them like this uh, water purifier. There are other spaces like rescue pods that you won't be able to pick up. But you can only do that if you have a blank space in your inventory. Deploying is when you have a non blank space in your inventory, you're going to be placing it down. Then you have west, south, east, and north, and there's going to be two of each of these. Each round, it's pretty simple. You're going to flip up a transmission card. It'll tell you what to do. Okay, there are uh, five different commands, and the third one is going to be revealed. So if I wanted you to go north, north, uh, south, and then I wanted you to go west, and then finally, let's say I wanted you to repair. It would be this order, right? North, north, south, west, repair. Well, because of this transmission, it says three. You'd take three and give it to them, and they would say, okay, well, we know for a fact that south is three. The rest of these would get shuffled up, and then randomly, you're going to be making sure these are good and random. You're going to pass them out to them. They're going to then flip them over and try and guesstimate the appropriate path they need to take through the spacecraft, basically on where you're telling them to go. Now, the player that is giving them the directions, the commands, the ground control, is going to have three different mission objectives. And what their objective is to do is to get these certain letters to uh, attach to each other, be right next to each other, and also be repaired. So this says F and R, and so that means you need to get the F tile and the R tile right next to each other, and both on the green side. Whenever that happens, without saying anything, you can never speak when you're ground control. You're going to pass this card over to the players and give them a signal boost. These signal boosts are worth powers. Um, and then, of course, they can go ahead and read it and see what it says, like Hail Mary Pass. Central HQ says you should probably know that it is your cadet that if your cadet uses the rescue pods, they're not going to get anywhere near a safe zone before running out of fuel and oxygen. But if you detonate the fusion core to help propel it, they might have a slim chance to make it someplace habitable in time. So that's something that that's the objectives that you get to you get to look at and try and help your survivors or your people on the spacecraft, right? After you collect complete one of them, you can complete the other two. It doesn't matter what order you complete these in. Finally, you're gonna take these, these command cards and give them back to the player, all of them that being said. Another transmission will pop out, and then you're going to simply do the next one. And you're 
objective is after all the if the cards run out, all the different uh, transmission cards run out, then the game is over and you lose. However, if you're able to successfully complete it without having to draw a blank transmission card or without losing all the transmission cards, you're going to win the game. It's fairly simple. Sounds a little complicated, maybe. Let's go ahead and show you down below. We're back to incoming transmission. We're going to talk about how to play the game. So the first thing you need to do is set up the board. And like I've done already is you're going to set up five random pieces and they're going to be in these corners as well as in the middle and they'll be on their repaired side, which is green. The rest of these guys are going to be shuffled and placed here on their non-repaired red sides. After that, you're going to put the rest of the blank tiles or blank spaces in between them. You'll also have this north, south, east, and west tile, which indicates the point of direction. This being north, this being south, west, and east. The signal boost bonus cards will be set aside as well as the Depending on the difficulty level, you're going to be setting up a transmission deck. Two different portions. One of which is going to have the ones and twos, and the other ones are going to have the threes and fours. You'll shuffle them, and based on the difficulty, you're going to then place one deck on top of the other, preparing the game. You'll also be drawing three mission objective cards for the player who is going to be t trying to tell the other players how to move or where they need to put their different pieces. These three will be drawn and flipped over, and depending on the rules of the game, it'll tell you which pieces, uh, which cards you can use and which ones you can't based on the difficulty have the range of the cards so you couldn't do an R to an F because it's too far of a distance but we look at here we have an F and a T and we'll find this on the board there's the T and where's the F let's go ahead and find it here this is the F so you need to have both of these green and both of them have to be next to each other adjacent to each other in order to complete this mission these are hidden mission objectives that only base control gets to see and once they're completed they're gonna be given to the other players when that happens they're gonna be given a signal boost card the rest of the transmission cards are gonna be discarded as well as the mission objective cards you won't need them then mission control is going to get the command deck it'll have three different abilities as well as a bunch of different directions two of each you're going to have collect repair and deploy as well as west south east and uh, north these cards are going to be used for transmission data so the first thing you're going to want to do is look at over here and we have a, a c to a t so we know that these two need to be next to each other and both of them have to be repaired this one can be picked up and this one cannot be picked up and so we're going to start by flipping over a transmission card transmission card tells you the order in which you need to place the cards and also if it is a green symbol or green like um overlight or highlight that means that is what is going to be shown when you're passing the cards out in the order so in this case we're going to have we want the player to move pick this guy up move it over here drop it off come over here and repair the section but we don't want to tell them that they don't know that's what they need to do you're simply going to give them uh, a, a directions as well as uh, the objectives or, or different um, actions they can take collecting is pretty simple when they have a blank tile it's basically like they have an empty inventory they can choose to collect and that would be to switch these spaces and this this card would be over here which means you have the comms module in your hand deploying means you're going to be deploying something which means you have to have one of these symbols uh, in your inventory and you can then place it down and then repairing is simply flipping a red side over to a green side the rest of these are simply just movement so what the players uh, what, what we want the player to do is move west so that's what we this is all in your head by the way move uh, west when indicated by over here um, but we also want them to collect this so we're going to first do collect then we're going to have them move west west we're going to have them deploy that that module right here and then we want them to move west one more time as well as then go ahead and repair the symbol here which will have these guys these two connected to each other and both on the green side which would complete this ct objective now remember this is all uh, going to be hidden so nobody's going to be able to see this other than the person who is playing base control except for number five that specifically shows what we want that to happen so we, we want to show them okay five is definitely going to be uh uh, repair the rest of these were going to be shuffled up and distributed to the other players in which they're going to try and guess in which order these are going to go out so after they shuffle these they're going to repair they're going to show them off and they're going to try and guess how they need to be moving in order for this to be correct so remember you can only repair things that are red we can only go west so uh and we also know that repair is always going to be in the fifth slot so maybe we want to actually go ahead and collect this that makes sense that makes the most sense when we collect we're simply going to switch these out then we want to obviously go west and going west again wouldn't help because we wouldn't be able to deploy. You can't deploy on something like this. So you'd move this over here. That would allow you then to deploy. And finally, after that, we would go ahead and move west one more time. And then, of course, repair. Now, that is only to say if everything works out perfectly. If this were to work out perfectly in this order, these two would be complete. And this objective would be complete as well. You would give this to the players who were solving the order. And they would then be able to read this and collect a signal boost card. These boosts are going to be doing something. This one was a debug, which means certain times in the game, certain transmissions are going 
going to be buggy. And basically you can go ahead and use this card to remove that bug or that error, but you can choose to use that when you want. Also, after this is complete, you're going to take all these commands, give it back to mission control once again, and then they're going to try and get them to do the next objective. So we have an O to a W over here. So let's look, there's the O over there and there's the W over here. These can both be picked up. So it doesn't matter which one you pick up. They just need to be brought and connected to each other. So he would once again, go ahead and select the order in which he hopes they are going to happen in. Then this is going to be flipped over. They would be shuffled. And then the players would then discern based on what they know, what they need to do in order to try and connect the pieces that need to be connected. Although no information is really given other than this and the cards distributed to the players. If by the time the game is over, all the pieces are not put together and these missions are not complete, the game is over and they lose. If they are connected before the last card, before the final card is done, then the players are going to win collectively as a team, including with ground control. Now remember, these are the only ones that can be actually picked up and moved, whereas stuff like the transplant craft or the rescue pods or the science lab cannot be picked up. And the objective is simple, just moving around the board based on the commands you're given and trying to put the pieces together that are repaired. If you can do that, you win. If not, you lose. All right, let's tell you, tell you how to play the game or tell me what, what you think about the game. Incoming transmission is a fully cooperative game, but of course, one of the players ground control is not able to speak and he has to use all the information given to uh, the other players by commands in which they're going to try and put into a certain order based on what they think needs to happen based on the information being given. Of course, the transmission cards can make things easier or more difficult by giving you the green highlighted areas to indicate that is the correct area, whereas giving you these red error areas, which means they're going to need to add an extra card randomly, an extra command randomly to the sequence, and it needs to be discarded. It must not be used, um, and it can kind of mess you up. Not only that, though, but as you complete different missions, you're going to get signal boost cards. You'll be able to use clear signals, cross-checking abort and debugs, these certain things that are going to give you bonuses or ways in order to kind of uh, cross-check information that may be bad. Now, there's a ton of different mission objective cards. This is mainly used for the setup of the game, but there's a there's a whole bunch of these guys, and I think it's probably one for each type of combination. Uh, you don't really need all this many of them, but I guess it doesn't hurt either way. Of course, like I said in the beginning, there is a certain setup to the game in which if it's too far away, they're not going to be appropriate. So you're going to discard cards that are not going to be able to be used for the game. Otherwise, you're going to just select three. Of course, you can make the difficult more diff more hard more you can make the difficulty increase by simply choosing the higher levels based on the difficulty setting higher levels will indicate more errors as well as the likelihood of not getting any of these green highlighted spaces and simply going ahead and going around the board this game presents itself really nicely we've played it quite a few times and i do enjoy it i like the fact that you're working together and you can kind of try and guess what ground control is doing based on their previous attempts at showing you where to move sometimes it's gonna be a lot really simple okay you can only move west and you have to collect like the first example I gave you. That one's pretty self-explanatory and most people are not going to get that wrong. And also there's only certain ways you can pick things up, deploy certain things and repair things. You can't repair something that's already repaired. You can't collect something that's not able to be collected. So those give you some simple ideas as to when you can play certain things and when you cannot. And so you're going to be working with the rules of the game and also the cards you're being given to work together. This is definitely a full cooperative game. It feels very cooperative. You do feel like you're kind of like out there and you're just hearing like radio signals like show me move left, move right, and you don't really know exactly what's going on, but you have an idea and you know that things are going to be fixed and put together and you're going to get little bits of storytelling. So all of these actual mission objectives here are going to have their own unique stories to them and you can choose to read them and they say something like defective batteries. Our last diagnostic report shows that the androids power cells were exhibiting signs of cell failure. We can't afford to have it lose power in the middle of this operation. We must have a backup power supply nearby. Put the energy pack near the android just in case. And so that is something that they're going to know originally the ground control and then they're you're eventually going to understand the story as well. So it progresses differently throughout different storylines. Now, that, is, that being said, the game's fun. It's really enjoyable if you like those kind of quiet back and forth games in which you're working together with a crew of people to try and figure out what one person is doing. You're going to like this game. Uh, the graphics are cool too if you like the style, like the 8-bit style that Magic Meeple is usually producing, such as uh, I like to have a game that I'm, being, I'm giving away right now called Fire of Eidolon. It's another style of 8-bit graphics that uh, Magic Meeple does. It works well. It's a really fun game, and so is this one as well. Uh, what I'd like to see in this one is added more signal boost cards, different styles of difficulty in the transmissions. Maybe remove some of these mission objectives to give more variety of that kind of stuff. What would also be kind of cool is adding in a way where you can play as one player and the team of um, you know people, as well as one player and the team of other people, and simply having mission objectives for each team, and there being some kind of um, competitive slash cooperative game style. I think it'd be pretty simple to 
to kind of put into the game. And I would like to see that added as well. But as the game stands, it's very fun. If you like cooperative games, like I said before, you're going to enjoy this one. And as long as you don't mind a bit of like arguing amongst each other to try and determine what the best course of action is, you're might likely to get an alpha gamer who's played many times before because the more times you play this game, the better you're going to get at it. Especially if you played with the same type of ground control person, you're going to understand how they place cards and where they're going to want you to go based on how they place them. And it is difficult. There does pro provide some difficulty, especially with the harder, um, the harder action uh, the harder different uh, transmission levels you, you can get in this game. If you really want to test yourself, you can go on the extreme difficulty setting and really get at, you can get at it. Most of the time, you're going to find yourself on the last turn of the game, hoping and praying that you make the right decision. And of course, that operator is just sitting there going, oh, please, please, I know you've messed up, but it's not too late, because messing up in the game doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose. And in fact, sometimes when you mess up, you can still put pieces together that you normally uh, not put together, and that would in turn complete a different objective that maybe they weren't going for which still works out in the end. Overall, solid game. Definitely check out Incoming Transmission in the description below, currently on Kickstarter. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this game, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. We do content almost daily if you really want to check it out, as well as checking out Incoming Transmission by Magic Meeple Games. It is a super fun little cooperative game. We play it many, many times, and that says something. All right, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, which we're currently giving away, like I said, Fires of Eidolon, as well as, uh, the Broken Tokens organizer for Rising Sun, and if you want to check out everythingboardgames.com, they are giving away Rising Sun itself, so it's a nice little com combo package if you can win them both. I know it's highly unlikely, but you could, and that's what matters, right? As well as checking out the Giveaway Geek as well. They do some great content and have a bunch of giveaways as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to attempting to give you as much information I can from Earth as you try to survive on a space station aboard a broken pile of rubble, all on your own, next time.